Hello guys and welcome back to another episode of The Micropilot. Um, we're all stuck inside at the moment, so now's the perfect time for me to get around to making some ground-based videos, which I've been meaning to get around to for a while now. So, in this video, I'm going to be showing you how I've got my flight bag kitted out and hopefully you can learn something from how I've got mine set up and it's interesting to see how other people have their set up as well. So it's worth pointing out that most of the kit in this bag is from Pooley's flight equipment and I'm really proud to have recently teamed up with Pooley's to now offer you, my viewers, a discount of 5% off all of their kit apart from their Bose A20 headset range. All you've got to do is on checkout use my discount code the Micropilot to get 5% off most of their kit. Um, but I'll talk a little bit more about that towards the end of the video. Now the bag itself and most of the kit that came in it um, was given to me by Heli Center and it's all part of the course that I'm on. Like I say, most of it is Pooley's kit, but like most people, I have changed it up and configured it in a way that suits me on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, my days can vary, so I can have a full day of just doing theory revision, or I could have a full day of flying, so that's briefings, flying and debriefing and things like that. So my bag's got everything in it that I might need for a full day of being a student pilot. The bag itself has got five main compartments. You've got the two big pockets either side, you've got a slim pocket along the front, and then you've got two slide-in pockets on the back. Now, this is a good place for me to start. So in here, I've got my water bottle or juice bottle, and I have my high-vis vest. Moving to the front pocket, this is kind of where I've dumped the stuff where I don't quite know where to put. So in here is my logbook. So unlike some people, I like to always keep my logbook with me. Um, some people argue against that because they think they might lose their logbook. Now I keep mine with me because I find it far easier to put my entries in at the end of every flight so I don't forget to. I know some people um, accumulate their flights on a piece of paper and then they put all those entries in at the end of the week where they catch up with it but I just find it easier to keep it with me bang it straight in there and then it's done I don't have to think about it also in here is a copy of the Skyway code there are electronic versions out there that can go on iPads and I'll talk about iPads in a moment but you know it's always handy to have it with you um, just to quickly reference you know you should be covering pretty much all of this stuff in your theory training anyway now, the side pockets, um, despite there only being two of them, um, I always forget which pocket I'm using for different things. So I've colour coded them, I've just put a bit of electrical tape on each one. So I've got blue this side and yellow this side. So in the blue one is pretty much all of the stuff I use for my flight planning and pretty much I use it as pencil case as well. In here is a pencil case and I've got every type of pen and pencil highlighter and marker pen you need so I always know where they are and I don't have to go hunting for the pen I want. Um, in here, um, which is quite standard for most pilots, is to have a pack of four of these. So these are fine tip permanent markers to use on your charts, to use for your flight planning and things like that. I never used to be a fan of markers but now I'm using them all the time and especially Using something that I found was quite um, interesting. I'd never known that this was a thing before, but um, I bought a bottle of nail polish remover, and this perfectly wipes away permanent marker from any smooth surface. So, especially on your charts and on your kneeboard and things like that, a bottle of this, you just dab a bit of it on a cloth or something and it'll wipe straight off. When it comes to nail polish remover, a quick tip is this is the cheapest one I have found. Um, it's something like £1.75 from the co-op. Um, ones online I've seen on Amazon can go up to something like £7. So just go to co-op and get one of these. Um, and this will last you quite a while as long as you're not using it to <laughs> remove your nail polish. Um, to go along with that is a little trick that I've sort of come across and that is to use a dried out um, dental wipe or surface cleaning wipe as sort of a long term wipe basically. So 
you just get out a Dettol wipe, let it dry over a radiator or something. But it's quite tough um, and it won't break apart like a tissue will. So, you know, this will last you a very long time and you can always just keep it in your bag and it's good for getting rid of permanent marker or china graph or whatever you want to wipe off. Okay, so that's that blue pocket on the side. Now I'll move over to the yellow side. Now quite understandably for the fact that I run a YouTube channel, this pocket is all about my camera gear. And to be honest, most of it is just for the one GoPro that I always carry with me. So I've got a GoPro Hero 3 Plus. At the moment I'm just using a chest harness with it and um, just to see what that feels like whilst I'm wearing it. Um, I know that um, Ben learning to fly likes his head mount. Um, I've flown with the head mount a few times. It's okay and it does get you some better shots depending on what you're trying to film. Especially if you've got the one camera angle, it's better to have a head shot because you can see everything that you're looking at. But if you're doing it on every training flight you go out on, or you're on a very long flight on a warm, hot day, it can get quite annoying. And then the rest of it are cables. I've got a charging cable in there for the GoPro. I've got an audio feed for the GoPro as well. I know a topic a lot of people are interested in is how to get audio from the aircraft into the GoPro. Um, this one, um, I think it was something like £35 online. Um, this is a splitter between your normal GA headset. So this would plug into the aircraft just like your headset would. Your headset plugs into this bit just like it would into the aircraft, but this cable splits off and goes into the GoPro. And then that's what puts the audio in there. Um, there's many different methods of doing it. You can use a splitter to go into an audio recorder, or you can use a lavalier microphone to put inside the cup of your headset and then put that wire into a camera. I prefer using this because once you set it up you can just forget about it and I've used it so many times I trust that it works. Um, power bank pretty much essential because my GoPro is getting old it doesn't like to work for longer than about 10 minutes anymore without having a constant feed of power. Um, also handy for if I'm out and about and I can't find a wall socket in my phone battery or my iPad battery is getting quite low. I've got power here, I can charge them back up with. The last thing in here is a little set of ND and UV filters for the GoPro. Um, I didn't quite believe the difference it made, especially when you're filming in a dark cockpit and it's quite bright outside. It looks like it's completely white outside, but the cockpit looks fine. This helps eradicate that. Um, and these were quite cheap as well. I think I picked these up off eBay. Make sure you buy the ones that fit your GoPro though. These ones are designed for the Hero 3 Plus. That just leaves us with the big main pocket in the center. A big um, double sided zip with a string attaching in the middle. And then it just flaps open. This is quite common on most flight bags you see out there anyway. In here is pretty much the main chunk of the stuff that I use. Um, I used to have everything lying down inside the bag, but I've realised that everything just sort of sits better when it's all stood up in a row. Um, the first thing in here is my Bose A20 headset. Um, with my headset, I've got a um, GA style headset, which is those pins. And I did buy um, a GA converter, so those pins go into there into a UK NATO style headset for helicopters. Unfortunately the Cabri G2 needs a US NATO style connector which is just slightly different to this one. Why I don't know but it is. So I'm in the process of getting one of those so I can use my headset um, when I'm flying the helicopter. So if you want to um, check out my review of the headset. Something that I did that was quite unique to a review of the Bose A20 headset was I actually demonstrate how the Bluetooth in it works um, and make a phone call and things like that. So you can check that video out in the link below. Right, moving on. Um, I've got my knee board. Quite standard for most people. Just a standard um, knee board. It's on the front, it's got a little clip and a sort of plastic sheet that you can use this China Graph pencil on. Also inside the knee board I keep a sick bag with me because it's always handy to have one of those within arm's reach and then in here you just customise the um, plastic wallets that come with it. 
I've done a video before on knee boards as well, so that video is also in the link below. Obviously, I spend um, full days at Heli Centre, um, even if I'm not flying, so I could be revising or I could be flying um, for the full day, um, I'm not too sure. So, um, I've just put an empty one in here for now, but I'd always have a, um, a bit of a food container with me to have my lunch in, along with my water bottle. I mean, this bag will last me for the full day then. To go along with the revision, um, I always just carry around um, one of the theory books that I'm um, currently learning. I've recently got myself a second-hand iPad. Um, I went for an iPad Mini 4 because the 4 is sort of one of the um, cheaper but most um, up-to-date iPads out there. I'll be making a video soon on why nearly every pilot out there has an iPad and ever since I've got it, it's actually been really useful. Like I say, most of the books and the manuals and things like that have all been whittled down into this one thin tablet, which is perfect. Say you have to put the aircraft down in a field somewhere or if you're stuck away at a different airfield because weather limits what you can do. In here is a little sort of contingency kit that I've put together but the box itself is really small. Um, it's got all the essentials in it I need if I'm stuck away somewhere and it's quite lightweight as well so it's really no problem just sliding that underneath your seat or putting it in the baggage compartment because this could really help you out if you do get stuck somewhere. So it wouldn't quite be a flight bag without a chart. So that's in here. I do nearly all of my flight planning on here. No matter what flight I go on, I always keep it with me. You know, you don't want to be trusting your electronic devices because, you know, they can overheat or they can run out of battery. But I try and keep all of my navigation to the chart. Even when you're a licensed pilot, it's good to just navigate with the chart because you keep that skill up to date and you're not solely relying on your electronic device. Um, as well, flight ruler is probably one of the most awkward things in here because it's never fit in any bag that I've ever owned. Um, it's quite long, so um, it kind of just sticks up out the top end here, but it's handy having that flap over the top because you just zip up to the ruler and it just sticks out the top. In here is my DP-1 flight um, diversion ruler. I've recently just got this from Pulleys. Uh, I've not had a chance to use it yet. I should have used it by now, but the virus and everything. Um, this has a compass rose on it. And on here, you can put the wind direction and speed calculations for the different headings. Um, obviously very handy if you've got to divert during flight, you roughly know what your headwind or tailwind is going to be just by looking at these numbers you've put onto the compass rows. Either side, top and bottom of the ruler is a one and a half million scale, um, so you can quickly um, figure out distances. And quite handy, it's got a list of speeds down the side and depending on the length of the ruler, so depending on the distance you want to fly, it will tell you roughly how long it's going to take. So for example, if I want to fly 20 nautical miles at 70 knots, it says I'll take about 17 minutes to do that, which is really handy for diversions. Um, in here I've got a laminated mass and balance sheet. Obviously before you go flying you've got to make sure that your mass and balance is within the aircraft's limits, but I've laminated this so I can reuse this piece of paper. It's much easier to do that instead of using a new piece of paper every single time to check your weight and balance. Something in here that's quite daunting for a few pilots when they're first starting out. This is your flight computer. Quite daunting to look at when you don't have a clue what it does. And to be honest, I don't know half of what it does at the moment, but I'm still in that learning process. And at some point in the future, I'll be looking to make a mini series on how to use the basics of this. But with this you can calculate things like your drift because of wind or different types of fuel calculations um, all using just this without using a standard calculator and a piece of paper. You can all do it with that. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it was interesting for you to see how I have my bag kitted out. Um, it's an ideal setup for how I use it at the moment, especially in a training environment. You know, I've added stuff, I've took some stuff away, and now I feel like it's my ideal setup. Um, if you like the video, please click like, because it really does help the channel. 
and last time I checked somewhere between 60 and 70% of my viewers aren't subscribed to my channel so make sure you subscribe if you're new to the channel. A big thank you to Pulleys for teaming up with me and giving you a 5% promo code on nearly all of their stuff. So their link to the website is down below. Make sure you use the promo code, the Micropilot, on checkout. Make sure you leave a comment, let me know what you think, let me know what you'd like um, to come up in the future, maybe ask some questions that I can answer in a video for you, and get involved with the Instagram and Facebook accounts so you can see what's coming up on the channel as well. But guys, for now, make sure you stay safe, stay at home, and I'll see you in the next one.